Jen, get down of here. Listen, seems like our idea of taking control over the population and spreading the virus using 5G failed. So, suspend the production. I've talked to Bill Gates, and we have to come up with a new idea. Otherwise, the secret world government will be mad. Oh, and one more thing. I'm not Trump, and I'm not calling anyone. It's a fake. But you would believe it if it was a deep fake. A media technology that can make anyone do or say anything. Spreading through social networks, deep fakes can quickly reach millions of people and have a devastating impact on our lives. So, what are deep fakes, and who benefits from making them? Can deep fakes stir up political conflict and rob actors of their jobs? And is it even possible? To fight deep fakes. Time to find out. Let's get started. It's worth noting that video altering technologies are trending today. In Zoom, you can change the background during a call. NVIDIA has developed a technology that allows you to create realistic landscapes. Though, today we will talk about deep fakes that can replace an actual person in a video. First of all, let's see what deep fakes are and how they work. Wait, I'm not hearing the bell. Did you not click the bell to receive notifications of new videos? How will I know you're real? Go on, click the bastard and we'll continue. Oh, it's ringing calms me. So, the combination of deep learning and fake form deep fake, hyper-realistic videos designed to portray people talking and doing things that actually never happened. Deep fakes rely on neural networks which analyze facial expressions, manners, voice, and intonation of a person. The technology works with the help of GAN, Generative Adversarial Networks. Artificial intelligence uses the synthesis of a human image. It combines several images on which a person prints from different angles and with different facial expressions, and makes a video out of them. It analyzes photographs, a special algorithm finds out how a person looks and moves. This is where two neural networks work. The first generates image samples, and the second is responsible for distinguishing real samples from fake ones. This technology can be compared to the work of two counterfeiters. One fakes records, and the other tries to distinguish the fakes from the originals. If the second one detects a fake, the image is sent back to the first one, which improves the results, offering a more realistic image. In 2014, a Stanford University student, Ian Goodfellow, was one of the first to start developing deep fakes. And in 2017, fake videos began to spring out. One of the Reddit users, ironically called deep fakes, posted an adult video where instead of the real face of the actress, the face of Wonder Woman herself was used, Gal Gadot. And the dam burst wide open. A flood of celebrity deep fakes broke through the internet and overflowed social networks. Tom Cruise, Sylvester Stallone, Robert De Niro, and, of course, Nicolas Cage started appearing in films in which they had never starred. Here's a little story for you. In 1998, Will Smith, already being a superstar after Men in Black and Independence Day, was on a casting for the role of Neo in one tiny independent movie, The Matrix. The Fresh Prince did not like the idea of the Wachowski, then, brothers about people in leather jumping in slow motion and he abandoned the role, instead starring in The Wild Wild West. The Wild Wild West failed wildly, and The Matrix, in which Keanu Reeves starred instead, not only became a hit, but also gained worldwide cult status. A mistake that cannot be fixed, right? right. Wrong. Deepfake developers confidently say, In 2019, a deepfake was released in which Will Smith finally replaces Keanu in the title role. And although the implementation is far from ideal, the ground has been laid. The fact is, the services of a studio like Weta Digital, which provided blockbusters like Iron Man 3, The Hobbit, and Rise of the Planet of the Apes with special effects, cost millions of dollars. While the DeepFace Labs neural network is completely free, it is in the public domain and sometimes surpasses the work of large studios in face-swapping quality. Many would argue that in the recent Scorsese's gangster drama, The Irishman, Deepfake would probably do a better job than the film's CGI crew. Deepfakes can not only help rejuvenate actors, they can even resurrect them. In a Galaxy chocolate ad in 2013, the lively and magical Audrey Hepburn drives around Italy in a cabriolet and enjoys chocolate. We'd like that too, by the way. Back then, the combined efforts of dozens of computer graphics specialists had gone into making this short scene. And we're not even mentioning the scary budget of the endeavor. 
Today, with the help of neural networks, we can not only return actors from the dead, but also change them in the frame right on the fly. Just imagine. In the future, it'll be possible to shoot biopics in which dead people will play themselves. On the one hand, the prospects of deepfakes in movies look promising. You no longer need to spend hours at tedious auditions trying to find the right actor. Now we just stick various faces to a single actor and you're done. You don't need to think that the star will grow old and lose in popularity. Here you are, forever young Harrison Ford. In the same way, we can see the actors popular today in good old films. On the other hand, the definition of an actor as a profession will become increasingly blurred. For example, a new movie star can be assembled as a Frankenstein's monster. It's alive! One actor is responsible for body movements, the second is scanned for the face, and the third will provide the voice. And who is the star of the film in this case? We don't know about the future, but now there is only one star, Nicolas Cage, and no deep fake can replace him. What do you think? Do virtual actors have a chance to outshine real actors? Write in the comments. Deep fakes are difficult to detect because they use real frames, can believably reproduce sound and voice, and are optimized for quick distribution via social networks. Thus, many viewers really think that the video they are watching is genuine. Moreover, fake videos are aimed at social networking platforms where conspiracies, rumors, and misinformation are easily spread, since users, let's be honest, tend to go with the crowd. Cheap deepfakes, that is, low-quality videos with slightly tweaked real content, are already everywhere, as they are widely available. Go to your favorite application store, and you will see dozens of programs that can change your face to Putin's in real time. Scared? You haven't seen our video on the horrors of 5G. Click the pop-up above. It's definitely not fake. The quality of these programs is not quite good, of course. That's why it's both a cheap and relatively safe option. The danger, however, lurks in high-quality, realistic deepfakes used for misinformation and political games. Let's take a closer look. American society is concerned that deepfakes will be used to threaten national security by spreading political propaganda and disrupting election campaigns. Representatives of U.S. intelligence have repeatedly warned of the threat of interference in American politics, especially in anticipation of the election. You can put words that are beneficial to someone into the mouth of any politician on video, the video becomes viral, and voila! You have a powerful weapon in today's disinformation wars. Since such amended videos can easily distort the opinion of voters. Remember the crazy video where Trump promised to build a wall between Mexico and the U.S.? <laughs> uh, that's right, he really did say that. In the 2018 real fake video, Donald Trump gave advice to the people of Belgium about climate change. The video was created by the Belgian political party, SPA, to attract people to sign an online petition calling upon the Belgian government to take urgent action to combat climate change. The video provoked outrage at the fact that the American president intervenes in the climate policy of a foreign country. Remember the House of Cards and all those tricks that were used there to damage people's reputation? Everything just got worse. Foreign intelligence can easily make a fake video of a politician using, for example, a racial slur or giving a bribe. With a presidential candidate who confesses to complicity in a crime, a government official in a seemingly compromising situation, and much more, such fake videos are likely to cause unrest in the country and election disruptions. In the famous BuzzFeed deepfake, former United States President Barack Obama calls Donald Trump a total and complete dipshit. It would seem, what is wrong here? In fact, in place of Obama, all this was said by the actor and director Jordan Peele, warning the public about the dangers of the new technology. Thanks for the warning, of course. But the main question remains, how to deal with fake videos and how to distinguish them from real ones? The answer is not far away. Anti-deepfake technologies provide perhaps the most diverse set of tools to combat video counterfeits. Such tools should detect deepfakes, verify the authenticity of content, and prevent the use of content for the production of deepfakes. For example, Reface AI developers not only provide users with the opportunity to meet Dr. Octobama, but they also create software that helps recognize generated images and videos. Last year, Facebook announced a competition to develop technology for detecting fake videos with a prize pool of $10 million. 
Thus, the social network hopes to stimulate the development of anti-deepfake technologies. It's not surprising, especially after a fake video, in which Mark Zuckerberg directly says that he stole and controls all our information. In general, the problem with anti-fake technology lies in the fact that there are much more research resources available, and people involved in the development of technologies for creating deepfakes than technologies for their detection. For example, users upload 500 hours of content per minute to YouTube. This week, Twitter is struggling with 8 million accounts trying to distribute manipulative content. This poses tremendous challenges for technologies that need to study all published materials in a short time. In addition, deepfake developers typically use the results of published studies to improve their technology and circumvent new detection systems. For example, researchers found that early deepfakes did not mimic the frequency with which a person blinks, whereas recent programs corrected this shortcoming after the results of the study were published. Today, experts at Media Forensics have proposed a number of subtle indicators for detecting deepfakes. While it is becoming increasingly difficult for people to distinguish between real video and fake, AI can play an important role in detecting fakes. For example, AI algorithms can analyze photo response non-uniformity in a video sequence, that is, defects unique to the light sensor of certain camera models, or biometric data such as blood flow, which are indicated by minor changes that occur on the person's face in the video. New fake detection algorithms are based on mammalian auditory systems, for example, on the ways in which mice detect inconsistencies and subtle errors in sound that are often ignored by humans. The AI can either view the video frame by frame to track forging signs, or view all videos at once to check for soft biometric signatures, including inconsistencies between head movements, speech patterns, and facial expressions to determine the fake. You can prevent the creation of a fake by inserting noise in photos or videos. This noise is invisible to the human eye, but prevents the use of video to create a deep fake. You can also wear specifically designed glasses to avoid face recognition by spoofing the AI deep fake. This technology can help the likely targets of a deep fake attack, such as politicians, celebrities, and corporate leaders. But as with cybersecurity, the first step to solving a problem is understanding the problem and its ability to influence us. Only then can we develop and implement technical solutions that can solve the tasks. It seems that the more we learn to better identify fakes, the more fakes learn to cheat us better. So a good solution would be, question everything you see. Although new technologies pose a terrible danger to the media and the perception of information itself, it all depends on who uses these technologies. While politicians pour mud on each other, shoot compromising materials, and rig elections, we can only rely on scientists to fight against fakes. Yes, now we can keep up with the progress and track all the fakes on the internet on time. But in the end, the best way will be found, and the face replacement technology will finally be used for its intended purpose. Replacing all actors in all movies with Nicolas Cage. The hills are alive with the sound of music. We love you, Nick. Brain frame out.